All right, for chapter one, we're going to look at slope, and slope as written as rise over run. So the slope is used to describe the rate at which a distance rises or falls. That's the vertical distance over the distance it runs, which is called the horizontal distance. Um, we can see this in road signs. Slope is given as a degree or gradient, which we'll look at uh, later on in this chapter. Okay, so you also have to know how to understand graphs and coordinates. So you got to make sure that you watch the video. I think it's for section 1.3. Um, <clears throat> it kind of reviews how that works on a, on a grid. Okay, so for now, we're just going to look at slope as rise over run. We're not going to look at a grid. Um, again, make sure that you watch that video for section 1.3. So the first thing we're going to look at is the diagram to the left. We could look at the slope as being the vertical distance, which is 7. That's the vertical distance over the horizontal distance, which is 18. So we can write this as the slope, which is equal to the rise over the run. Be really clear on this, rise over run. That's going to be equal to my rise is 7, and my run is 18. This is kind of the preferred way, rise over run, but you can also convert it to a decimal if you want to make things a little easier. So 7 divided by 18 is equal to 0 0.39. So this is okay too. We can write the slope as a decimal to simplify things, but typically it's written as a fraction where you have the rise over the run. But if you're going to be doing calculations with it, you can use a calculator and calculate it into a decimal. So let's look at this for example one. Write the slope of a line that rises 12 over a distance of 8 meters. So again, we have the slope, which is equal to the rise over the run, which is equal to the rise is 12, and the run is 8. Now remember, these are in meters. And again, there is my fraction. Now, it's always a good idea to reduce your fraction. So when you're reducing, Keep in mind what you can divide by. Well, I can divide the top by 4, and I can divide the bottom by 4. So when I divide those, I get 3 over 2. So that's a simplified slope. It rises 3 meters for every run of 2 meters. And again, you could reduce this to a decimal, which would be 1.5. Either one of these is acceptable. I prefer fractions, but if you're going to be using them in terms of um, the math and calculating, it's a good idea to sometimes convert it to a decimal. Okay, so notice that we do reduce fractions to lowest terms, but do not cancel the units. In this case, meters. So this is always meters. So it's 3 over 2 meters, okay? Or 1.5 meters. We could go one step further and solve this, which we did, and we got... Um, dividing 3 by 2, we should get 1.2, not 0 0.5, or 1.5 as our slope. Sometimes you'll have to work from the slopes to find horizontal distance. Uh oh, now we'll have to do a little bit of algebra. <clears throat> In this case, you will need to set up an equation and solve for the unknown value. Okay, so recall, if the unknown value is on the bottom of a fraction, we divide by the slope. If the unknown value is on the top, then we multiply. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, let's see. If a hill has a slope of 3 over 90, so we have a hill that goes up and has a slope of 3, remember that's my rise, over 190, which is my run, okay? So it goes up a distance of 3. for every distance of 190. Now, this is telling me that the hill rises a distance of 300 meters. Okay, so here I have my hill. It's rising, so it must be my vertical distance of 300 meters. And it says, what is the horizontal distance? So I don't know what that value is on the bottom. So I start with my slope that I'm given. My slope that I'm given is 3 over 190. Now, why didn't I put it the the rise of 3 over 190 of my run over here. Well, because it's, I know that in actual fact, in my actual diagram, it's only rising, or it's rising a distance of 300, not just 3. So I need to figure out the horizontal distance of this particular example. 
Okay, so when I work out this example, I have 3 over 190, or I convert that to a decimal. So I take 3 divided by 3 divided by 190, which is 0 0.016. And now what I do is I say, okay, now what's my rise over my run? My rise is 300 over my run, which I don't know which is X. Remember, rise is vertical, run is horizontal. And what did I mean up here now? Oh, and now I can actually use this. If the uh, unknown value is on the bottom of the fraction, which it is, then I have to divide by the slope. Because I know that 300 over x is going to be equal to my slope of 0 0.016. And if my value is on the bottom, kind of what I do is I switch places with the 0 0.016 and I divide. Divide by my slope. So that's what I meant up here. If the unknown value is on the bottom, it's an easy way to remember, you're just going to divide by the slope. So I take 300 and I divide by 0 0.016. Six, and I get a distance of 18,750. So I have that written here. Solution is 18,750 meters. Notice we set up the slope as a fraction with the unknown value, in this case being the run, which we called x, and set it equal to the slope that I knew. So the slope should be 3 over 190. Um, in this case, we have a rise of 300, which means that my run is going to be, um, basically it's 100, 100 times that value. So you get 18,750, roughly. Okay, so that's the end of this lesson, writing slope as rise over run, don't forget that, um, and then converting the fraction or having it as a decimal form.